Hello and welcome back to the Shiki Science Show. So today we're going to be getting to know the circadian clock. So it's as fair to say that we live in a cyclical world. The sun rises and the sun sets every day on around a 24 hour timescale. Well, unless you live in the poles that is. And so we are diurnal creatures. We live during the daytime and sleep during the night. Whereas mice and other nocturnal animals are, well, nocturnal. And so they are active during the night time. And so on this 24 hour timescale, we see changes in the behaviour, physiology, metabolism and cell activity of different organisms. So for something to be circadianly regulated, it has to fulfil three different criteria. One, it has to have persistent free running rhythms. Secondly, it needs to be able to be entrained by relevant external cues. So these include things like the light and when you eat. And lastly, it has to be temperature compensated i.e. it can't be faster when it's hotter and it can't be slower when it's colder. So as can be seen here on the right hand graph, even at a higher temperature, the 24 hour rhythm remains the same, i.e. it's temperature compensated. And so research into the circadian rhythm can be traced back to the 1700s, but it was only in 2017 when the Nobel Prize for Physiology and Medicine was given to Geoffrey Hall, Michael Rosbach and Michael Young for their work on the circadian rhythm and the key factors involved. So circadian rhythms are daily fluctuations in behaviour, physiology, metabolism and cellular activity. And so these can be traced onto the clock, also known as the clock of health, which shows at what times of the day different uh, factors and mechanisms and processes are happening in the body. So as you can see here, um, at 6am when you wake up, you have an increase in blood pressure, which is also correlating with the increase in cortisol levels in the body. You also have high testosterone levels and high alertness. And so that peaks around 10 a.m. And in the afternoon, you have the best coordination, the fastest reaction times, the greatest cardiovascular efficiency and muscle strength. Come to the evening and you have the highest blood pressure and body temperature and melatonin starts to get secreted in the evening. And this is your sleep hormone. And so finally, before you eventually go to sleep, you have the suppression of the bowel movements. And during sleep itself, initially you start with deep sleep, followed by REM sleep. And this is where you have a low body temperature before you wake up again in the morning. And so in addition to the clock of health, you also have the clock of disease, which is pretty much as a consequence of the daily fluctuations and different activities in the body. You have different diseases showing their symptoms or phenotypes at different times of the day as well. So for example, where blood pressure and cortisol levels are high in the morning, you also see an increased rate of people having myocardial infarction, angina and sudden cardiac death. In the afternoon, there is an increased rate of perforated gastric ulcers. Late in the evening, you have symptoms of chronic pain and gout symptoms. And in the early mornings of the day, um, you have the most severe asthma symptoms and the most severe depression. But the key thing to point out is that these different symptoms and diseases are not restricted to these times. They're just when they're most likely to happen based on how they are circadianly regulated in the body. But how does this regulation actually come about? So within a cell, there are a series of protein factors that coordinate the 24 hour regulation of the different processes within the cell. And so to provide a simplified overview here, there are four different key core clock components that um, produce a negative feedback cycle that enables the 24-hour regulation to occur. So in mammals, these four main components are cryptochrome periods, clock and BMAR1. So clock and BMAR1 promote the expression of cry and purr, and then cry and purr, the protein products, repress the activity of clock and BMR1, preventing their own expression. And this negative feedback with delay enables the around 24 hour regulation to occur. Although this is just a simplified overview and it is a bit more complicated and we don't really fully understand it yet. But this is just the basic introduction to the core clock components. This Nature of Your article will provide you with a more thorough introduction to these components. But as you will also notice, there is still much we are to learn about the circadian rhythm, which makes it a really exciting topic to research.
So the circadian clock is a way to coordinate different processes so that they occur at the adaptive time of the day. For example, we don't want our body temperature to be high when we're trying to sleep at night. So hopefully this video has given you an insight into the circadian clock.